So there's been a lot of buzz the past few days on the dirt sheets and via the assorted interwebs, social media platforms, that the WWE is very, very interested in currently, or at least, or maybe former, depending on your perspective, New Japan wrestler uh, Jay White, and that Switchblade might be coming to WWE. Now, first, let me talk about those fans that are pissed because he might be leaving New Japan for WWE. Maybe I get it. You worry that he's going to get wasted by Vince's organization. You think it won't be a great fit. You would rather see him stay with New Japan. Well, tough shit. Deal with it. Jay White has the flexibility and opportunity to go where he feels is best for his career, which I would assume means provides the opportunity to make the most money. And if he's looking in terms of both money and options, perhaps outside of professional wrestling, I can promise you that the U.S. is going to provide way more of that than Japan would. Let's be clear. So why would you hate on him for that? If they, if this is an opportunity for him to make more money or maybe a lot more money with WWE than he would ever make with Japan, again, why would you hate on him for that? Because let's be clear, if you were in that same spot, you probably would choose to do the same thing because that money talks and all other bullshit walks. Or it could be something that his dream throughout his entire life was not to work for New Japan, but to work for WWE. And that was his dream and that was his vision. That was his dream and his vision alone. And he has every right to pursue that, whether or not you like it or not, or whether or not I like it or not, or whether or not anybody else likes it or not. It's his career. It's his life. It's his dream. It's his goals, his aspirations. So don't you dare sit there and give him shit because he doesn't want to wrestle for fucking New Japan anymore. Like, imagine that. Like, how stupid can we be? You know, and we'll see how it ultimately plays out. Maybe he ends up appearing at the Royal Rumble. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he still ends up staying in Japan. Who knows? Frankly, I'm a little surprised that AEW wouldn't be interested in him because it would seem like he's right up their alley. Right? Right? Now, unless there's other backstory there or there are other reasons there, I'd be kind of surprised. Now, maybe it's a, he feels like he can leverage himself and negotiate himself into a powerful position where he would make more money with WWE than he would with an AEW or even a New Japan. Again, I get it. Like, you do you and exercise whatever leverage you can have because the world is all about leverage. Business, relationships, families. It's all about leverage. Who has it and who exercises it? But if you're going to ask me, am I happy about the news of Jay White potentially coming to WWE? No. I pass on this. And you're going to say, why? You're just going to hate on him because he's a guy from New Japan. Somewhat, but not totally. Somewhat. Um, because here's the thing. To me, this is an example of a guy... Yet another guy that the hardcore internet fan base has been pumping up for years. And so many of these guys that I've seen them pump up over the years, when I actually kind of lay my eyes on them or really start to pay attention to them, I'll look at them and say, damn, these guys suck. Like, what the hell are these hardcore fans talking about? What the hell is so star-spangled, spectacular, and awesome about them? Like for years, I've heard about the cleaner, Kenny Omega. That dude is boring as shit. He does not translate to North American wrestling nearly as much as he does Japanese-style wrestling. That's clear and that's obvious, isn't it? Like even hardcore Omega fans, hardcore cleaner fans, hardcore Bullet Club marks have expressed disappointment with his run in AEW. Right? I used to hear for years about how awesome Ricochet was until you find out that Ricochet can't do anything but flip and bump around like so many other damn guys in professional wrestling. So what the hell is so special and spectacular about him? If Ricochet was one of the few 
that did what he did, I would totally get behind it. I would totally understand. I'd be like, you know what? That's unique. That's somebody, something different. Not everybody needs to talk. Not everybody needs to be a larger, over-the-top character and personality. I, I, I'm with you on that. But the problem is, you got so many damn ricochets and too many wrestling fans sit there and take their narrow view of what they enjoy about professional wrestling, which is the match and move mark bullshit, and think that that carries over to all of professional wrestling, and think that's the thing that's going to entertain the most people, and it's not. It is not. It's just not how it works, and we've been having this discussion on here for over a damn decade now, and it still doesn't sink through people's heads. And it only gets worse. I've seen it with Omega. I've seen it with the Young Bucks, God forbid. These guys are great and these guys are awesome. They are great and awesome if you're the type of hardcore fan that does not care about storytelling, that does not care about characters, does not care about consistency, does not care about any of that crap. If you only care about who could do the most moves, then obviously those guys are perfect for you. Cool. They appeal to you. Doesn't mean that they appeal to a larger audience. And when I look at a Jay White, at least I say, hey, you know, here's a guy, 6'1", 220 pounds, you know, kind of Seth Rollins-ish size. You know, compared to a lot of other guys you see, like he's, he's, he's on the bigger side, it seems like, for professional wrestling now. Which, that in and of itself, if you're bland as shit and you wrestle just like everybody else, just means you're a taller version of the same vanilla midget that everybody else is. And before you sit there and try to rage at me, because you know you're going to, and you're going to talk about, you hey, know, he's different, he's a character, he's great, and he's awesome. I used to hear that about, what was it, Kenta Hideo Itami? He sucked. I used to hear for years about how great Shinsuke Nakamura was. And my God, he's going to come, and he's going to be incredible. And then once he got away from NXT, what happened? <laughs> and, and, and part of the problem here is... Vince doesn't know what to do with these guys. His creative team doesn't know what to do with these guys. So it's not just about the wrestlers themselves and what they have, and more notably in a lot of these cases, what they don't have. It doesn't matter if Jay White could cut a tremendous promo. He can't, but assume he could. Let's say that he could be a larger-than-life personality. Just because you give yourself a name doesn't mean you're a great personality or character. It doesn't mean you know how to tell stories. Like when you come and you transplant yourself to the WWE, it's an entirely different environment, an entirely different reality. This is not just like a, a transition, let's say, from an Impact Wrestling or an AEW or an NWA, you know, whatever, to WWE today. New Japan is the ultimate other extreme in, in many ways. And Vince has never gotten that. He doesn't get it now and he never will. And the people that work with him never will. So even though you might think he's great and is awesome, and I don't think he is. I just think he's a slightly better version than a lot of the other crap we already see. You know, like, I look at him and I say, what's so different from him in Undisputed Era? Nothing. And what is Undisputed Era? The one that the hardest of hardcore match marks really like and nobody else fucking does because they know they're vanilla and bland as shit. Like, there's nothing special about him. Nothing stands out. And a guy like Jay White, he comes here. Now, maybe you say if he goes to NXT, it will be a little different. But is NXT really doing that many things right right now? Really? Really? He just goes to a land of misfit toys and you know what happens with them then? And then, God forbid, he ever gets to the main roster. Do you have any confidence or any faith in the WWE to understand how to utilize him right? And then on top of all that, you're talking about a Jay White. When he would come, he'll have to make changes and some significant changes in order to realistically have a shot. And does he have the type of performance chops, the level of versatility as a performer to be able to pull that off? I doubt it. The odds are against him. And we've seen plenty of examples in recent years. Like It's almost gotten to the point that every time I see the internet really pump somebody up to the frickin' moon, I should instantly know that they don't have it. Every once in a while, they might be right. They were right with a CM Punk. They were right that Daniel Bryan had it. They weren't right about how Daniel Bryan would demonstrate that he had it because the Daniel Bryan of 2009-2010 was not a main event WWE type of player. Over a decade, and as he evolved and he changed and he grew as a performer, 
I was wrong. He had the ability to develop into that. But those fans 10 plus years ago, they were talking about this guy right here right now. They were wrong too. So at least I can say with Jay White, I get some sense of he tries to be more than just a match and move mark. I can get down with that. I also understand wrestling has changed. You know, this should absolutely not just be about freaking uh, battles of mercy and bear hugs and sleeper holds and all that crap. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. It should be balance. There should be variety. There should be spice. Um, but you got to you got to really sell me on what's so different about Jay White that he's going to come to a WWE and he's going to become a big star. What's so special about him compared to so many other guys on the roster? And don't be one of those dopes that just sits there and says, I really like Jay White. Really explain to me the difference. What the fuck is so different or special about him that you have full confidence that this guy is going to come in and rock shit out? Then on top of all of that, what makes you think that WWE is going to do anything right by him? Now, me personally, I look at Jay White and I say, why in the Sam hell would you want to come to WWE? Because eventually, if you get back to we're traveling again for these shows, I promise you whatever additional money you think you're getting from WWE gets eaten up with travel and other expenses, you're not making as much as you think you are. Like, is it really worth it? You see, you see this happen. These guys come to WWE because they get, they get stars in their eyes and then a couple of years later they're gone and they're like, well, that was... A waste of time, but at least I tried it. Yeah, no, I'm good on Jay White coming to WWE. And it's, and it's not just about him. And some of you are going to take that as the only thing because you can't understand nuance and layers and context. And that's whatever. It's been the same battle for years. But, you know, if he wants to come, he is certainly entitled to come. If he negotiates the best deal for himself and it happens to be with WWE, I salute him. More power to him. But if you're going to tell me because a bunch of you think that he's great, that he's going to be great, if anything, that makes me hesitate to think that he actually is great. Like if people kept telling me that Jay White sucked all the time and that they hated him, I might actually be more intrigued and say, you know what? He probably does have something. So you guys tell me, do you want Jay White to come to WWE? Are you excited about the possibility of Jay White coming to WWE? Am I right? Am I wrong? Let me know in the comments, please. I'm anxious to see what you have to say.